columnist Doug Todd has been writing about uh, international students and how certain international students from India are impacting uh, the local Indo-Canadian community and some concerns that are being raised uh, by their arrival. Uh, Doug, can you uh, just summarize perhaps uh, what's happening uh, with these students and the concerns that uh, people are having? Yeah. There's been a real surge of foreign students in general to Canada, but especially from India. There's now 130,000 foreign students from India and Canada, which is the highest per capita in the world pretty well. And they've been drawn, it's really increased in the last two or three years because the federal government has kind of sent signals around the world that foreign students are kind of go to the front of the line to be considered as immigrants. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these students from India have been coming to mainly Toronto and Vancouver area, signing up for courses, some of them for various serious programs to you know, get PhDs or something, and some going into some pretty fly-by-night institutions, mainly because they want to be here to eventually become immigrants. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of concerns in the India and amongst the Indian Canadians here that they're being exploited on many levels. <laughs> okay, so uh, recently the, uh, the education minister in the Punjab uh, spoke about his concerns. Maybe you can go over what he had to say. Yeah, he's really trying to warn um, students over there. They're losing a lot of students. Uh, he's trying to warn them that, uh, that there's a lot of risks to leaving India t t in hopes of immigration. That it, at one level it's just going to cost you a lot of money. And the, these are now fairly low-income families from India that are supporting their kids to come here. And it costs at least $15,000, $20,000 for the first year. And then it ends up, by the time you're sort of getting towards becoming possibly an immigrant, it's not as easy as they're making it sound. With the so so the, sort of the bad guys in this are some of the immigration consultants, both in India and uh, Canada, who are making it sound really easy. But it ends up being extremely costly, and the students often end up having to work super hard um, just at jobs to afford it all. So, so it's these types of jobs are more than you know a four-hour shift twice yeah. a week. What what types of pressures are these students facing? Yeah. So, international students are only allowed to work twenty hours a week. They're most be supposed to be studying, but there's lots of accounts rising now that they're some of them aren't studying that much. They're just doing the bare minimum, but they're mostly working. Um, s the foreign minister, sorry, the education minister from the Punjab says he came to Canada and he saw sort of the dismal conditions a lot of them are facing. With some of them, he said, working 16 hours a day. Whatever. I don't know if we can prove that, but Not that's what he said. Not a lot of time for sleep, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's rough. Um, and some of them are even having to send money home to their parents to who help finance them to get here and mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. And then Indo-Canadians are in Toronto, in particularly, have been saying oh, um, they're stealing our jobs because some of them are willing to. They're getting exploited by employers and they're working less than minimum wage and stuff like that. So it's caused quite a bit of turmoil in the Indo-Canadian community in Canada. Okay. Well, we'll keep following this story. I know you're right in the middle of it, Doug. Yeah. Uh, and there's probably going to be one or two more columns, maybe. Uh, and we'll be back to talk about this a little bit more. Great. Thanks a lot, Don. Thank you.